Hey guys, it's Dr. Childs here, and today we're going to be discussing the difference between two thyroid conditions. One is Hashimoto's thyroiditis, sometimes referred to as Hashimoto's hypothyroidism, and also hypothyroidism by itself, or having a low thyroid. So we're gonna be discussing the differences between these two conditions, why it matters, what causes them, how they're treated, and so on. So we'll be talking about all of this stuff in just a second. But if you don't know me, I'm Dr. Childs, I'm an internist, and I specialize in treating people with thyroid problems, helping people with hormone imbalances, and of course, helping people lose weight. But today we're talking about the thyroid. So let me get out this board here. And we'll talk about the difference between Hashimoto's hypothyroidism, or sometimes just abbreviated Hashimoto's, but another name for it could be Hashimoto's thyroiditis, and hypothyroidism. So we're gonna talk about each of these separately, and I think it'll make a lot more sense as we do this. So first of all, what is hypothyroidism? So if we break down the word, hypo meaning low, and thyroid meaning, of course, your thyroid. So th what the name is basically telling you is that this condition is a condition defined by a state of having not enough thyroid function or hormone in your body. So low thyroid, sluggish thyroid, hypothyroidism, hypothyroid, these are all words for the exact same condition. And it means that you do not have enough thyroid hormone in your body. Now here's where things can get a little bit confusing. So people who have low thyroid are diagnosed by a TSH or a, a lab test, which is called the TSH, and usually, not always, but usually a high TSH means that your thyroid is low. So you can see how that's confusing, right? A high TSH means that your thyroid is low. So don't let that confuse you. Uh, the TSH is less important than understanding that hypothyroidism means that there's simply not enough thyroid hormone in your body. Now, of course, the thyroid hormones we care about are T3 and T4. And of course, you can test for these using simple blood tests. So you can actually check to see if your thyroid is low by looking at the free thyroid hormones or by looking at the TSH. And these are lab tests that you can, you know, stick a needle in your blood, take it out and look at it under, uh, through the lab and they'll tell you if your thyroid is low. Now, this condition is not the same as hypothyroid or Hashimoto's, but let me tell you this before we get into the Hashimoto's aspect of it. Hashimoto's usually results in hypothyroidism, but not all cases of hypothyroidism are caused by Hashimoto's, okay? So hopefully that makes a little bit sense uh, or some sense as a primer, but I think it'll make more sense once I talk about Hashimoto's by itself. So coming back to hypothyroidism, again, it's any condition in which there is not enough thyroid hormone in your body. If your cells do not get enough hypo, or they, if they do not get enough thyroid hormone, you will experience certain symptoms. And these are the symptoms you're probably all, all aware of. Things like hair loss, things like weight gain, things like depression, things like cold intolerance, um, things like a reduced heart rate, things, things like a reduced metabolism. Basically, your entire body is slowing down because the thyroid controls all of these things. So not enough thyroid will cause all of these symptoms or not enough thyroid hormone will cause these symptoms. But what causes the low thyroid to begin with? Well, there's actually quite a bit of different causes. I'm going to go through some of these for you just to give you a better idea. There's actually many reasons that your thyroid cannot be functioning very well. Um, for instance, there's a connection between your brain and your thyroid gland. So in order for thyroid hormone to be produced and pumped through your body, your brain must talk to your thyroid gland itself, and then the thyroid gland must produce that thyroid hormone, and then the thyroid hormone goes through the body uh, and interacts with your cells, and that's how you feel better. So anywhere along that system, from, from basically there's two parts of your brain, then into your thyroid gland, and then into your, then into your cells, something can go wrong at each step. So there's lots of different places where there, there can be issues along with that. So I've included it here, um, the topic of HPT, which, which stands for hypothalamic pituitary thyroid access. Now, don't let that confuse you. Basically what I'm saying is there are two aspects in your brain that could cause issues, and also the thyroid gland itself can cause issues. Now, usually in Hashimoto's, the reason that people with Hashimoto's have low thyroid function or they have hypothyroidism is because the body damages its own thyroid gland. If the gland is damaged, it can't produce thyroid hormone. But again, we'll talk about that in just a second. So problems in your brain can cause low thyroid. Problems in the thyroid gland itself, like we mentioned with Hashimoto's, can cause it as well. So guess what happens if you damage your gland? I mean, literally, if you were to uh, have some sort of trauma to the gland itself or damaged it, I mean, generally, that's this is uncommon, but it can happen. I mean, imagine just 
I don't know, getting hit in the neck really hard right on top of your thyroid gland. If you damage that gland, it's not going to be able to work. Therefore, you're not going to have enough thyroid hormone in your body. Therefore, you're going to be in a hypothyroid state or low thyroid function. Another cause of hypothyroidism is Hashimoto's thyroiditis, which is over here. Remember, it is a cause of hypothyroidism, but not every case of hypothyroidism is, um, result, is the result of Hashimoto's. Okay, so that's the difference between those two things. Another cause of low thyroid could be nutrient deficiency. So a big one here is iodine. If you don't have enough iodine in your body, well, iodine is required to produce T4 and T3, or vice versa, I just mentioned those backwards. Um, if you don't have enough thyroid hormone, your thyroid hormone is gonna be low and you're gonna be hypothyroid. So nutrient deficiency, deficiencies can cause that. And then lastly over here, we have surgery or RAI. So if you surgically remove your thyroid, well, guess what? You're gonna be low thyroid. If you have ablated it using radioactive iodine, which is a treatment for thyroid cancer and um, hyperthyroidism or Graves' disease, if you damage it and it doesn't work anymore, you're gonna be low thyroid. Okay, so those are these are probably the main causes. Most causes of low thyroid function result from one of these. And you'll notice that Hashimoto's is a big one. This represents a huge percentage, maybe 70 to 90%. But there are other cases in here as well. Then you also have the secondary causes of low thyroid. Now, many of you probably also fit into this category, and these are things which are a little less common. So for instance, just being overweight can damage your thyroid and result in low thyroid function. Extreme dieting or yo-yo dieting can cause low thyroid function, and inflammation from any cause can cause low thyroid function. So you have primary causes of low thyroid and you have secondary causes, either because they're directly impacting the system I talked about through the brain and the thyroid gland, or because they're impacting your thyroid in another way because it can't work as well as it could normally. So even though things are being pumped out, your thyroid hormones are there, your cells just aren't able to use them as well, they're not converting as well, and so on. So there's primary and secondary causes for low thyroid function. And it matters because the treatment, which is what I have down here, TX, um, it changes for each of these, right? We're gonna talk about Hashimoto's, but the treatment for Hashimoto's is not the same thing as having a treatment for, or the treatment for iodine deficiency causing low thyroid. In that case, you'd wanna take some iodine and it would improve and it, you would call it a day. But iodine is gonna do nothing if you've had your thyroid completely removed surgically, right? If the thy thyroid gland is not there, iodine is not gonna be the treatment. So you can see that the treatment varies based off each of these conditions. But if you think that hypothyroidism is the same thing as Hashimoto's, which it is not, and you're trying to treat them both in the same way, you're not gonna end up in the same place, right? You're not gonna end up in a good place, I should say. So the treatment matters, um, and that is this is basically hypothyroidism in a nutshell. Now, this is a very complex topic that I've broken down you know, into re really simplistic terms here, but at least this gives you an overview. So the next thing that we're gonna talk about here is Hashimoto's. So how does Hashimoto's differ from hypothyroidism? Remember, I said that Hashimoto's can cause hypothyroidism. So basically, Hashimoto's is a condition which can cause a low thyroid, but it's more complicated than that. So Hashimoto's arises because it is an autoimmune disease. It is your own body attacking your thyroid gland. Now, eventually, over time, if you don't do anything about it, your body will destroy that thyroid gland and it will be non-functional. So if you can imagine your thyroid gland and it's being attacked over time, it's going to shrink in size, it's gonna become atrophied, and then it's no longer gonna function, and so therefore thyroid, thyroid hormone's gonna drop and you're going to become hypothyroid. But that doesn't happen right away, and it usually takes a prolonged course, takes a long time to get there. Um, so this is where things can get a little bit confusing, because Hashimoto's can do, two, can do three things. It can make your thyroid function completely normal, it can make your thyroid function low, and it can make your thyroid function high. Now generally, over time, it will always end up causing low thyroid function. But some people in the beginning have completely normal thyroid function. Some people in the beginning alternate between low and high, and they can go back and forth, low, high, normal, low, low, normal, high. They can kind of do that in a roller coaster, right? if you can imagine that. And so people get really confused. They're like, what am I? Is my thyroid low? Is it high? And sometimes if they don't know they have Hashimoto's, they're just really confused at the whole picture. So Hashimoto's can cause low thyroid. It doesn't always, but it usually ends up in low th in causing low thyroid uh, permanently if it's left unchecked. So that's what it is. It's an autoimmune disease. So right here, autoimmune disease. That's Anyway, that works. So autoimmune disease. Now, the causes of this autoimmune disease are completely different than hypothyroidism. So anything that causes problems or damage to the immune system is generally what will cause or result in the autoimmune, the autoimmune aspect of Hashimoto. So these causes are completely different than the causes of low thyroid function. So one of, one of the more common ones would be um, infection, usually viral infection from something called Epstein-Barr virus. So an infection can actually trigger Hashimoto's and cause this process and cause these problems. Gut issues as well. So leaky gut, leaky gut can cause... Um, 
uh, problems with your immune system, which can trigger Hashimoto's thyroiditis. And that is another very frequent or common cause of Hashimoto's. Sometimes it's just genetic. Sometimes it's just bad luck. If you have a, a history in your family of people who have had Hashimoto's or thyroid problems, you know, every single woman or whatever in your, in your family dating back um, several generations, and they've all had thyroid problems, there's a good chance you will. Um, it doesn't guarantee it, but there's just a much higher likelihood that it will also happen in you. So genetic plays a role here as well. And I would say one of the bigger ones is also stress. So stress uh, from any cause as well, stress, like I said, well, actually, I don't think I mentioned stress here, but stress can impact your HPT axis, which can cause low thyroid. And stress can also impact your immune system, which can trigger Hashimoto. So stress kind of, so there's some overlap between both of these uh, conditions here, but stress is another big one. In fact, I see a lot of um, women, but I'd say it, uh, it probably happens in men too. I just don't hear a lot of, a lot of uh, different cases in men. But I see a lot of women who have had Hashimoto's triggered from things like death and death, um, uh, deaths in their family or divorces or things like that. So events that are incredibly stressful in your life can trigger this whole process and cause Hashimoto's, which can cause hypothyroidism and so on. And again, it's different because the treatment is different for Hashimoto's than it is for hypothyroidism. But if you ask the wrong people or if you go to your doctor, they might think that both of these conditions are the same. They might say, well... If you have Hashimoto's, it will, they know this, doctors, by the way, know this, that it will eventually cause low thyroid. So they'll treat you as if you are hypothyroid and they may, may never even mention that you have Hashimoto's. That's a huge mistake though, because you're missing out on some of these things that you can treat. For, for instance, you can treat if, uh, infections if they're present. You can improve your gut function if it's there. You can't do anything about genetics, uh, but you can Im impact these other factors as well. And you can do something about your stress. Now you need to impact the immune system if you have Hashimoto's as well as the thyroid system. So it may include things like using thyroid medication in addition to taking supplements, in addition to fixing your gut and so on. Okay, so there's big differences in terms of how you treat both of these conditions. And it's really actually quite important that you understand the distinction between the two. You can easily diagnose Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Well, I shouldn't say easily, but uh, the, probably the best way to diagnose Hashimoto's is with blood tests, which check for thyroid antibodies. So thyroid globulin antibody and TPO antibody would be the best way to check for Hashimoto's thyroiditis. In almost all cases, not all, but at least 80 plus percent of cases, these are positive in your bloodstream. So if you check them, so whenever you get your thyroid checked, if you haven't already, make sure you get these antibodies checked for, because there's a lot of you listening to this right now who have been told they have hypothyroidism, who really have Hashimoto's, but they've never actually been tested for that. So you must make sure that you're getting checked for that. And you'd be surprised at the amount of people who aren't actually being tested for that. So this is a, a, a big, you know, sort of a 35,000 foot view of these two conditions. We could talk for hours about each one individually, but we won't for now. I want to give you that bird's eye view of what's going on here. And this is the difference between hypothyroidism and Hashimoto's. Remember, hypothyroidism means low thyroid function, which can be caused by many different things, including Hashimoto's as a cause of low thyroid. But Hashimoto's is the autoimmune disease of your thyroid gland, which generally results over time in low thyroid, but you can also have normal thyroid function and high thyroid function as well because of that autoimmune aspect. So that's the big difference. Now, if you have any questions about this or if anything is left unclear, please leave a comment below. I'll do my best to get to those, uh, the, any questions that you may have. And by the way, if you haven't already, make sure that you download my free thyroid PDF resources. I have tons of helpful resources that you can use, that you can download, uh, which contain information like this, hopefully, which make dealing with and managing your thyroid problem a lot easier because that's my goal. That's what I want to do. I want to help you guys figure this out because it's kind of, it can be complicated. And if your doctor's not on your, on your team or on your side, it makes it even more difficult. So anyway, make sure you download those free resources and leave any comments you have below. And otherwise I will see you guys in the next one.